as the chair appointed by the Sibelsky Academy's academic board, I hereby declare the public defense of Taru Koivisto's doctoral dissertation open. Uh, welcome to this defense um, of Taru Koivisto's doctoral dissertation. Uh, the title of the dissertation is The Unsettled Space of Healthcare Musicians, Hybrid Music Professionalism in the Finnish Healthcare System. We have this time two opponents for this dissertation. Um, Professor Raymond MacDonald from the University of Edinburgh and Emeritus Professor Evan Wood from the University of Oslo. You are both warmly welcome. Honored Gustas, honored opponents, honored audience. Each one of us may suddenly end up in a potentially vulnerable situation in our lives. In the middle of a life and death struggle that threatens our own health and well-being, or that of our loved ones. This rapid change in our lives may occur because of an accident, illness, chronic pain, or some other life-changing circumstances, such as a local or even global crisis. The ways we are cared for and carried through these struggles, and the kind of support that is available to us, depends not just on the public services, the values, and structures of our societies, but also on our individual networks, the communities we are engaged with, our personal life trajectories, or someone's simple solidarity with us in that fragile moment. In these turbulent times, I could describe these ever-changing and transformative processes affecting our well-being and our life through a metaphor of a feather that floats in the air, full of contradictions, being so fragile and empowered at the same time. You may try to grasp the essence and meaning of it, but it has its own flow and it can very easily fly away from us. We are here today to discuss my doctoral dissertation, which addresses the emergence of an expanding music professionalism. The dissertation examines musicians' work in the Finnish public healthcare system. It has been conducted in three different contexts, each creating one case in a multiple case study approach. A neonatal intensive care unit in a children's hospital, the infection and orthopedic ward of an elder care hospital, and end-of-life care generally. Drawing on the wide research area of sociology and the theory of professions, I defined music professionalism as a dynamic, proactive approach that is ever-changing and being continuously developed within multi-level social interactions. Furthermore, I explored musicians' work as boundary work. This means that the musicians utilize exploratory interprofessional aspects in their work, moving in between professional and organizational boundaries in healthcare. Musicians' work was often developed through eye-opening key experiences in their professional or personal lives, creating transformative change through their own highly reflexive music practices. This kind of professional approach, where music practices are connected to and in ever-changing relationships with the context and situations they occur with, in, is called in this study hybrid professionalism. In a conceptual metaphor or a generative metaphor developed by George Lakoff and Mark Johnson, an idea, or preferably a number of interrelated ideas and conceptual domains, is understood in terms of another idea. 
through this kind of bridging language, which may also pre-linguistic in nature. The musicians of this study constructed a changing reality with other professionals, families and patients. Boundary work in healthcare may see, seem very removed from everyday life. But in the digitalized era, where almost everything ceased to be on sale or passed on as a property for globalized business platforms, capacities to connect and analyze multiple existing worlds become important assets for music professionals as much as anyone else. We do not have to think about this kind of boundary work or hybridity when th things go well. Eventually there comes a time when our survival might not be self-evident and we may even feel that we are facing a barrier that we cannot overcome. In these situations, the environment and relationships we have utilized to support us in the past often do not function optimally. It is not a new idea to combine the artistic and medical worlds. A musician can still always take a single geek in any setting, even in hospital or healthcare units or choose a more conventional artistic approach to their work in these contexts. This is and should be regarded as a very valuable activity, whether it is professional, voluntary or self-recreational in nature. Similarly, not all people chose to participate in shared musical situations or their participation might not necessarily seem active, such as the approach I named silent participation in this study. <coughs> but if one decides to take time for shared music making with and for the people involved, and ventures to look really closely at the musical moment at hand, a new world is revealed through expanding professionalism. A world that is more beautiful and spectacular than you could ever have imagined. In this study, both the music making itself and musicians' ability to sustain emotions for both themselves and others was found to be important. Shared music making, taken beyond solely performative actions, made many participants see and experience life through different angles. This helped them to understand the sorrow and despair in their lives in a more constructive way and create a bridge from specialized medical care to everyday life outside the hospital wards. According to the hospital staff and patients and their families, in some circumstances this musical micro-world had an essential effect on the participants' everyday lives and the relationships they had with their surroundings. To take a liberated approach and engage with spontaneous and hidden world, light as the feather, unfolding the eternity of space and time, requires a lot of courage from a musician. To explore the momentous musical experiences that touch upon our most precious and primary needs in life, also required a lot of courage from me as a music therapist and researcher, as I must admit and acknowledge. Just as hospitals and music are not a new combination, neither is it new for humankind to weep and grieve through music together. However, in contemporary life, illness, death and grief are rather hidden elements. What perhaps was new in my research was to frame the power of music in very practical ways, through the active agency and the conditions of this agency of all the people of the hospital community. Artistic and arts-based knowledge and research is often explored through tacit and implicit knowledge, which is sometimes seen as the opposite of formal codified or explicit knowledge. 
This formal evaluative discourse naturally emphasizes rationality, effectiveness and economics through concretely measured or otherwise evidenced interventions or activities. One cannot see, touch or necessarily measure our experiences within our lives or life cycles. But they are there, affecting our attitudes, values and decision-making on many levels. Such emotions, experiences, memories and transformative chains are in each one of us and have been made more visible through this inquiry. An aspect that is essential to an expanding hybrid professionalism in healthcare is that this approach affects our music practices at a very deep level. Therefore, it makes us responsible for how the social world around us is co-constructed in relation to cultural and professional well-being, ethics of care, and the integrity and safety of all the people within the shared music making. In this study, the significance of making music together was not about the musicians themselves and their performances, but the interconnectedness between all of the participants in the moment. To attain a professional approach where you altruistically support the recovery of others, you must take your time and let your full awareness be present in space and time. Beyond the level of visionary policies or festive keynote speeches, a pandemic situation and other global crises have shown that our contemporary societies and policymakers are not convinced, even in the light of its measurable health benefits, by the meaningfulness of the arts and culture. Through this dissertation, I have tried to highlight some of these undervalued issues and inquire about some of the biased narratives on the benefits of music and music making. On the one hand, Non-critical repetition amplifies often naive policy and the media-level communication regarding the societal impacts of the arts. On the other hand, separating arts-based research from the research carried out within the medical hierarchy limits the interprofession potential of this flourishing multidisciplinary field. Perhaps the strongest bias revealed through this study where the presumed well-being of the artists and musicians themselves, the obvious unsustainability of their practices, and the lack of educational support. If the musicians in this study had not been supported through the organizations they worked at, living and working in and through the so-called miracle of music did not help them to make their way through the professional jungle. Instead, their everyday work could become a burden and be ethically stressful. Let us return to the metaphor of a feather. Like music, the metaphors in this dissertation were not seen as philosophical mysteries, but as part of musical practice, making existential and fundamental questions of life easier to understand, accept, and sometimes change. Throughout the years, metaphors have been seen as threatening and even detrimental to scientific research. In this study, the work of the musicians was also seen by some stakeholders as detrimental and dangerous for best patient care. And the musicians were seen as frauds who had for some reason overcome the gatekeeping practices of the hospitals. However, the roles and boundaries in the hospitals were in fact sufficiently clear to the musicians and the hospital staff, and the equality-driven and ethically sensitive music practices were seen as highly supportive by the research participants, and as supporting the integrity and agency of the patients and even patient safety. The findings depicted a portrait of musicians as highly educated artists 
in their respective musical genres, who strove to preserve the excellent musical qualities in their work. They had adopted a highly ethical and sensitive working approach in healthcare through the in-service training that was available to them, creating collaborative working teams and making themselves vulnerable in order to gain practical experience in various working contexts. But still, why focus on research beyond music therapy, when music therapy has already covered such a broad range of interdisciplinary research and created a, a substantial knowledge base within music? During the course of this inquiry, I learned to understand that as a music therapist, musician or music educator, I do not own the music. A fundamental idea of music as a shared resource in life was my inspiration when engaging in many interesting but difficult discussions with other practitioners and researchers. Towards the end of the inquiry, more and more evidence was emerging that confirmed that, despite the professional differences, there is a substantial foundation aligning music therapy, artistic practice and music education. As the feather balances itself in the wind, this study has sought to balance and ease scholarly discussions by strengthening the under-research area of professional musicians' practice in healthcare. Furthermore, integrating and appreciating knowledge generated in between music professionals and the various disciplines within music could be a way to balance the discussion and competition between professions. In conclusion, I would like to reflect on an important question. How could we help future arts and music professionals and students to raise their wings and fly? In this dissertation I have argued for higher music education strategies and curriculum building that would take account on the changing music professionalism in relation to rapidly changing societal challenges. It would be essential to help future professionals by providing opportunities to challenge themselves and to safely reflect on relational music work and their own relational music professionalism. Music students and professionals need, and we owe them, not just their basic right to be educated and ethically cared for, but also a meta-right to learn relational agency and expertise as part of their expanding professionalism in music, and in this way to reach out for a more socially sustainable future. I hereby call upon you, honored opponents, as the examiners appointed by the Academy Board at the Sibelius Academy to evaluate my doctoral dissertation and to present the critical comments you deem it deserves.